Let's try this. Can you read the board? It's hard for me to read the board. But it's about to Okay. So we can start by making a picture. Now remember that in some ways what we're doing is very similar to what we've done in the past. We've just identified one more force on objects. So we should keep trying to use our same old approach, which is to identify all the forces on the object. Well, what are some of the forces on this object? Uh, weight. And what direction is that pointing in? Down. Good. Right, the boolean force. And what direction is that in? Upward. Okay, good. And down. Okay, good. Um, Can we put in any more details about those? Do we have any special formulas for either of those forces? Um, we have the, the F boolean. Um, I would need the row. That's right. Just, now, what is the fluid? Water. Right. So they would either give us its row or we'd have to look it up in the book. Or I think we were talking about it a second ago, so we might look it up. But let's look at the chapter on fluids here and see if there's a table for densities. You know which chapter we're on now? I think it's 15. Okay. And there should be a table of densities. Unit density. I'll just remind you, we had that on the board earlier today. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. That's right, that is in Newton's. Good. Do we have any special formulas for the weight? Um, the mass times gravity. Okay, so what, what will that give us in this case? Um, I, that's um, what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So, nothing. <laughs> in fact, what that would give us is 9.8 times the mass, right? We don't know m, but we do know what g is. Okay, so now we've said all we can about these two forces. Do you remember, what have we usually done in the past after we've identified all the forces on the object? What's usually the next step? Um. We've identified the forces and we've plugged in as much as we can into our special formulas. What, what have we usually done to continue solving a problem like this then? Um, we do the second law, yeah. uh, x equals nine. Okay, good. Should we focus on the x component or the y component here? It looks like the y component is where the action is. All right, so what can we write on the left-hand side here for the y forces? Um, the buoyant force, mm -hmm. 9,400 um, plus 9.8m minus 9.8m. 
y minus because it's down. Okay, that's good that you caught yourself there. One way that we can make sure we're going to catch ourselves is, remember we should always get in the habit of putting in signs. What's the sign on the 29400? Yeah, I think if we put in that plus sign, that reminds us to put the minus sign in over here. But anyway, you caught that, so that's good. This is a downward force. That's why we're always focusing on whether things are up or down, so we can figure out what the sign should be. But what about this right-hand side? What should we plug in on the right-hand side? Um, zero, because the object is not accelerating. How do you know it's not accelerating? That's right. Um, how do I know it's not accelerating? Um, because it's not going to immediately jump out of the water and fly off. Okay, all right. That's a colorful way to put it. That's right. <laughs> And how do we know it's not accelerating downwards? Because of the buoyant force. Now, even with the buoyant force, we've seen things can sink. Oh, okay. But I think maybe, so what's the part, what, what was the word in the problem that told us that we weren't accelerating downwards? Oh, uh, it's floating. That's right. You can't assume, though, that any fluids, you can't assume that the acceleration is always zero in fluids problems. It's only zero if you're floating. Because then if you're floating, you know you're just basically motionless here at the top. We're ignoring any little waves that are pushing us up and down, basically. If you're floating, you should be motionless where you are, at the top of the fluid. And we know from many examples in the past, when something is motionless, its acceleration is zero. Okay. However, you don't want to start thinking that the acceleration is always at zero in water. We were talking before how sometimes the buoyant force can be overcome by the weight, and then the object would sink down, and then it would have an acceleration. Okay, now what? Force by the gravity. Okay, let's do that. And it is 3,000 kilograms. Okay, good. This is a very standard type of problem. So notice that we're still attacking these the same way as the earlier problems. We identify all the forces on the object. We use our special formulas, and we try to use Newton's second law. How could people get messed up here? Well, one way they could get messed up is, remember uh, earlier I asked you, what does the special formula tell us about the weight? And maybe you were thinking the right thing, but something you said is it didn't tell us anything. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't use the special formula, right? If we, if we just plugged in W here, we wouldn't really get the mass. So we have to still plug in mg, even though we don't know what m is. Just We still want to use the special formula so that we at least sneak m into the equation. That way we can actually solve for m. We've seen some other examples of that in the past. You should still use your special formulas even if you don't know some of the variables in the formula. Then you can figure out the variables in the formula. And we saw that if something is floating, it's motionless, so its acceleration is zero. And then we can solve these the way we've solved many of the other Newton's second laws algebraically in the past.